the voice of Sherry. The Durian Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Good morning and welcome to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. And you are at the Durian Heat, where we discuss issues around the Southeast Asia. But this time, for the next six months, we have started this beauty series with Durian ASEAN, collaborating with the BTL Clinic to talk about the issues regarding all those beauty and aesthetic problems here. So this time at the Durian Heat, we have invited Dr. Chin Shi Chun, who will be talking about and also sharing, discussing, giving us advice and recommendation on obesity. So let's say good morning to him. Hello. Hi, Grace. Nice to meet you. Yes. So could you give us a brief introduction of yourself before we start talking about obesity? Hi, I'm Dr. Chin here. I'm the director of MJ Aesthetic and Laser Clinic in Shah Alam. I'm the, currently the past president of the Malaysian Society of Aesthetic Medicine and uh, on certain days I actually have practicing rights at the Makota Medical Center in Malacca. Yes, so um, you're focusing more on obesity when it comes to aesthetic issues, is it? Uh, actually, I do both face and body, mm-hmm. Yeah, but I do do quite a lot of uh, patients with problems of obesity and overweight. Overweight. Yeah. So how bad is it when you uh, just focus in Malaysia? Um, how many a uh, percentage or population uh, generally uh, they come to you and they do consult when it comes to overweight? Uh, overweight and obesity actually is a quite a huge problem in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. As they say, Malaysia Bole. <laughs> uh, we are actually number one in Asia, Southeast Asia, mm-hmm. in terms of obesity. Our percentage are as high as 49% of the female population are actually overweight and obese and for the male it's 44% so you can actually say that every one in two person in, in Malaysia is actually overweight or obese mm. Well, is it because of food? Because Malaysia has a lot of uh, ver- uh, various types of food or is it because of genetic problem? What causes overweight and obesity after all? I think basically it's a life lifestyle choice uh, as you say we have lots of food here people yeah. go for their nasi lemak their chakwe tiao and things like that uh, but I, I guess the sugar consumption is really high in our country mm-hmm. uh, there are many studies by the Ministry of Health as well as reported in the newspapers we do take in a lot of sugar a lot of high calories in fact we take in a lot of empty calories that empty means calories. empty calories mm-hmm. that means uh, food very high calories but actually nutrient poor so I think that's one of the lifestyle and more and more uh, as you see the modern lifestyle we are really busy we have lack of time you know o- although I always tell people that lack of time is just an excuse you really <laughs> have to make agree. it a point <laughs> to that and uh, people do actually now more they, they watch movies they actually they most of the time they're on their mobiles internet chatting and I, I can see that in the young people nowadays they actually uh, hardly spend any time playing with their friends not like our time they actually chat with their friends watch videos online and really spend a lot of time sitting down and not really work out so you mean that they have become very bad couch potatoes nowadays <laughs> because of what this online technology and innovation. Yes, you are right, Grace. I totally agree with you that uh, they really become couch potatoes. And not only that, as you know, in modern society, uh, we are we live in a very stressed out uh, society, especially in the urban areas. And uh, when you're stressed, you actually produce a lot of uh, the stress hormone like cortisol. And cortisol is well known to be a hormone that actually build fats you know right and then you you start to build your fats in the wrong places all the time and that is really not good you have overeating and uh, calories which are not good then you you don't exercise as often as we would like to do you know and on top of that you live in a very stressful environment so all this really added to it 
And I think education is also a very important factor here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we really need to educate our public, our children, our society as a whole much better. Uh, we need to be a leaner society, you know, right. uh, leaner country. And uh, and I think uh, the Ministry of Health and then even in the Ministry of Sports, I see like uh, Minister KJ is doing a lot of publicity and yeah. it's really good. I really like that to He's happen more. He's been very active when it comes to health issues and also promoting a lot of stuff. Yeah, not only that, uh, he leads by example, you know, not only he talks about it, but I've seen him doing a push-up 40 times. That's really uh, amazing for a minister to do that. Right. Well, uh, when we talk about obesity and overweight, you mentioned two things, doctor. You mentioned about sugar intake as well as lifestyle. So how do they really relate to to causing obesity? Uh, Meaning that uh, how do we measure the sugar intake? And uh, when we talk about lifestyle, I believe younger generation, they're so into gymnasium nowadays, uh, like going to gym and the fitness clubs and then joining there and exercise. But do you see it is a uh, it is trend or do they really go for health, uh, you know, concerns? Uh, there's two issues here. One is the food. Mm-hmm. As you say, uh, fast food is mushrooming like anything. People take a lot of sugar, like, you know, you're cha time and things like that. Right. I, I mean, just all these sugary drinks uh, all over the place become l- really trendy among the young people. And uh, cakes and pastry, nice things right. to eat. So people just take it without knowing that this small piece of cake or just this cup of drink actually uh, is equivalent to maybe like two plates of nasi lemak, you know. When you think <laughs> nasi lemak, it's like there's a lot. But then you just take one drink, but actually it's loaded with sugar. Yeah. And sugar is actually... Unused sugar in our body is actually stored as fat. Our right. liver and things like that, it does the process and it's stored as fat. Uh, not only in the peripheral part of the body, but the most dangerous fat is like the visceral fat. Mm. The fat around our organs, our intestines and all. And, and this is really bad because toxins are really stored in this fat. Mm-hmm. Besides that... Uh, as you get obese, then you it's hard to exercise, so the cycle goes on. Mm-hmm. And then you don't feel good about yourself, you get depressed, you take more sugar, or you don't even feel like starting out in the beginning. And the other the other issue, like you told me, that people go to the gym. I think yeah. it, it's good. Gym is mushrooming all over the place. Uh, but then to go to the gym is one thing, but to really work out is another thing. Right. Like there are many types of exercises. Some people just do the cardio, for example, and even this cardio is really suboptimum. They just do at a rate that is comfor- comfortable to themselves, mm-hmm. and they don't really push themselves that hard. And then uh, you, your body is sort of adjusted to that. For example, you're running 5 kilometers in 45 minutes, so every day you do the same, it's not going to do any difference to your uh, weight reduction. I'd rather say fat reduction. Right. Fat reduction is more important. Weight reduction is not important for the reason reason that muscles actually uh, is more heavier than fat. Fats. So there are a lot of people who are heavy, but they are actually good. They are, they are fit. They are, there are lots of muscle mass in their mm-hmm. body as in contrast to those who have fat. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, in that sense, like the focus is more on fat. We want to reduce the fat. So doing cardio is one thing. But then you should actually get some advice from professional advice from like personal trainers. You, you may have to vary it with some weight exercises, some balancing, you know, maybe some endurance. So all these are important. And I see a lot of people, they go to gym. It, it's become like a bit of social activity. Activity. Yeah. They listen to their phone. They talk. They chat. They exercise <laughs> a little bit. So then... Back to basic, you know, what is the goal you want to do? Is it really for your health? Is it really for your endurance? Is it for your fitness? Mm. So that's that's really important. Mm. That's really uh, insightful uh, experience and also sharing f- uh, coming from Dr. Chin here. So we'll take a very short break and uh, we'll continue our conversation with Dr. Chin later on. The Durian Heat Bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. You are still with Grace at the Durian Heat, where we discuss issues around Southeast Asia. 
Now we have uh, collaborated uh, with PTL Clinic for about six months, focusing on the beauty and also aesthetic problems here. And at first, we have been uh, conversing with Dr. Chin to talk about obesity, and we've just generally touched on the certain issues when it comes to overweight and obesity here. But let's go a bit de- deeper, Dr. Chin. Let's do some comparison uh, compared to Southeast Asia. You mentioned about Malaysia being almost the first place when it comes to overweight and also obesity level in Southeast Asia. But how about comparing the general consumption or in terms of uh, the level of obesity in Southeast Asia compared to European countries? Uh, as compared to European countries, actually, we are we are almost on par with them. Wow. As Malaysia alone, mm-hmm. I'm saying. But if you com- you take the whole of Southeast, Southeast Asia, uh, but in the whole of Southeast Asia, you have a lot of countries that uh, the obesity problem is not so much. Uh, for example, like Laos, Cambodia, uh, and some other countries like Vietnam too. So the obesity problem is not so bad as us. Mm. So if you compare Southeast Asia as a whole compared to Europe, we are below them. Mm-hmm. We are we are much below. We are about half the half the problem of the Europeans. I see. Uh, but if Malaysia alone itself, I think we are quite on par with them. So, so Malaysia ranks still the first. <laughs> Malaysia still ranks the first in Southeast Asia, followed by Singapore and Thailand. Right. So when you talk about European countries, is it because of against sugar consumption, or is it more on the cheese and the dairy products? I think it's a lifestyle. The, the Europeans well. take a lot of dairy products. Uh, there are a lot of meats and mm-hmm. fat in their diet. They actually don't. Uh, they also don't exercise as much as they right. used to do. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I think the problem is really uh, global, and uh, more than the Europeans. Actually, the Americans are the number one in right. terms of obesity. Mm-hmm. They are worse off than the Europeans and. Followed by us Asians, and also I can safely say that it's also because of the old junk food, fast food, because you talk about McDonald's, KFC. Originally, they're all from the European countries. Yeah, they invented it. <laughs> they invented the problem. They came with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, then we can from there we can talk about uh, perhaps genders uh, between the male and the female. We roughly mention about percentages there, but could you elaborate more on that when it comes to obesity? Uh, gender-wise, usually women have more obesity as compared to men. I think that's how we are made up. Men mm-hmm. usually are the one who supposed to be the hunter-gatherer. Right. They go and hunt for food and things like that. So the body made up is that uh, they usually don't have so much of uh, fat. Whereas uh, in the women, they are childbearing. They have to give birth, so they have to store fat for like two percent and things right. like that. So uh, that's why women actually have more chances or easier to get overweight problem and uh, and obesity at the same time. Mm-hmm. And also the fat distribution uh, between the men and women are a little bit different. Women usually have uh, more fat like in the in the breast, in the buttocks area and also the thighs. Mm. Men usually is the belly. Right. You know, the beer belly. <laughs> <laughs> so when you talk about the fat distributions, perhaps that's why especially females also because of the, the influence by media there, they go for liposuction, right? Nowadays, especially the increased uh, popularity in the plastic surgery. So they go for liposuction, especially during, uh, I mean, among those uh, fat areas and what's your take on what's your perspective when it comes to this procedure yes i agree with you grace uh liposuction and many types of liposuction for example they are the laser liposuction Mm -hmm. that's the one they use ultrasound that some of them use jet uh water jet and things like that Uh, it's actually one of the more popular types of surgery that's done by the plastic surgeons but more and more nowadays, uh, society and population as a whole, we tend to, the trend is to go towards uh, non-surgical procedures to reduce the fat. To reduce fat, everybody wants to reduce the fat, mm-hmm. whether it's one part of the body or more parts of the body. So that 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 is really uh, not an issue. Everyone wants to re- reduce the fat. It's actually, how do we want to do it? 
more and more people are going towards non-surgical. They use machines, they use diet, exercise, medications, even uh, bariatric surgery, for example, to bend the stomach, you know, to mm -hmm. stop them from eating more. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a lot of uh, methods to do it. Mm -hmm. You mean there are more alternative ways that, you know, you can go for without just um, taking your fats out of your body. But does it really help going for all this, uh, especially a liposuction? Does it help to reduce your obesity level in your body? Uh, liposuction does not actually reduce your obesity level. Mm -hmm. Liposuction just actually removes some part Fats. of fat from certain parts right. of your body. Mm -hmm. And likewise, a lot of machines out there, uh, the, the more modern, we are really living in a very exciting times mm -hmm. now with uh, modern technology, modern medical equipments. Mm -hmm. We can actually remove a lot of fat easily and safely, mm -hmm. almost as good as uh, the liposuction result. Right. And, uh, and when you take into consideration the risk involved with a surgical procedure, mm -hmm. the anesthesia that is needed, uh, I think it's you can see why, you know, all over the world, the trending is towards the non-surgical way of right. body contouring. Mm -hmm. Well, talking about um, all those non-surgical way to overcome this problem, but on the other part, we are also at the very serious uh, level when it comes to obesity because that causes a lot of health problems. So, Dr. Chin, could you elaborate what are the health problems uh, are from obesity especially? Yes, uh, obesity in itself or together with some other comorbidi comorbidities actually is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the things that uh, obesity causes are like hypertension, mm -hmm. heart disease, diabetes. Diabetes is a huge problem in our country. Right. It came with a lot of side, other side problems like, you know, stroke, heart attacks, you know, kidney problems and even uh, eyesight problem right. as a result of diabetes. Mm -hmm. So uh, obesity and diabetes actually go hand in hand. Mm. Okay. Besides that, uh, even some of the more unknown things that obesity cause are like maybe a heart failure, right. kidney failure, and then even liver problems. We call this the non-alcoholic liver disease. So mm. you, as you can see now, uh, this thing are not so obvious, but it's actually a part of the problem of uh, obesity and overweight. And uh, that's something called sleep apnea. You know, and obese people, they actually can't sleep well. They have right. problems in sleeping. You know, they actually stop breathing during their sleep. Mm. So these are some of the other problems. And one other problem is like infertility. Right. You can see infertility on the rise, you know. Mm. Of course maybe due to stress, due to modern lifestyle, but obesity in itself does actually reduces, does reduce the uh, fertility. Mm -hmm. So you've just listed uh, quite a number of uh, diseases and health problems that are caused by obesity. And of course, that sounds very um, problematic and very serious. But you, if you talk about Malaysia, what is the highest ranked disease from obesity in Malaysia? Uh, I would say what are the worst problem that is related to obesity in maybe our country? I would say heart disease and heart diabetes. Disease, right. Heart si disease and diabetes are the two big killers. And sorry, I forgot to mention that uh, even certain type of cancers ac actually are associated with obesity. Right. Okay. For example, like breast cancer. Uh, it's an estrogen-related cancer. They are also actually very closely linked with obesity. Right. So you see these three things here, the heart disease, diabetes, and even some cancers are associated and related to that. To mm. obesity. So you, before the break, you mentioned about the public awareness and also the education, um, how it is important to bring up, uh, to uh, educate, especially students, younger generations, in order to prevent getting all these diseases uh, by obesity. So perhaps you can elaborate more on how we can approach, or doctors or even the government can approach all this education system in Malaysia. I think... Uh First of all, we need to, maybe media helps, like even this interview, uh, media does help a lot mm -hmm. indeed. But at the same time, I think the policymakers in uh, Putrajaya, they should actually 
view this because obesity come at a great cost, cost of disease. You right. know, so much money have to spend on drugs, on problem as a result of obesity. If we can reduce it, why are we? We are a good country, and then compared to some other Asian countries, we can actually do better. Why are we uh, even higher than Singapore, for example, mm. or higher than Thailand? Mm -hmm. Are we not doing anything enough? I believe there are a lot of things that the policy makers can actually sit down and have the political will to actually tackle it at its roots. Mm -hmm. Because it's costing us a lot right, in terms sure. of man hours, in terms of productivity, in terms of cost of health care. So I think we really have to do something there. One other uh, issues that it just uh, crossed my mind while listening to your your share uh, experiences is that is it because I mean would public transportation contribute to obesity as well? For example, when you talk about um, East Asia, Japan and South Korea, uh, the public transportations are really good and people just walk and they use all those uh, facilities there. But when you come to Malaysia, Indonesia, the infrastructure is quite, um, quite I will say, bad compared to other countries. So people just tend to use cars. They have lesser walking uh, hours. Grace, I think you, you brought up a really important... This is what I noticed too. Whenever I went to Korea or like Singapore mm -hmm. or even Hong Kong, people walk a lot. Even yeah. in Thailand, I find in Bangkok, we walk a lot because the public transport is really good. Everyone takes LRT or MRT and things like that. And I can really relate that whenever I travel on these countries, uh, actually my pedometer or the one... Right. The apps on my phone actually always tell me, yeah, you have done enough of oh. walking today. And I see that's maybe one of the one of the issues we can handle or we can do something about. You to have a really good transport system here and have a lot of pathways that are covered. Mm -hmm. That means friendly to, to people walk. who walk. Yeah. And then it's it's so, I mean, it's cheap and it's good for everyone. It helps to decongest the city, you know. And I find you yeah, have really brought up a really important issue, a really good way mm -hmm. is to promote walking. I would like to walk to, I mean, I would like to take a public transport to go to care. I don't really like to go to a traffic jam and find <laughs> parking and all. If I can just hop onto an MRT and go down. But that needs to be done. It's just on the MRT and LRT that the feeder, I, I think there's a whole lot of issue. Let yeah. the transport ministry do it out. But I think walking and public transport is a really good way. Mm -hmm. So we'll take another short break and then when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Dr. Chin on the obesity. The Durian Heat Bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Good morning and welcome back to Durian ASEAN. You are with Grace at the Durian Heat, where we discuss issues and also matters around Southeast Asia. But this time, we already have come to the last segment of the Durian Heat with Dr. Chin Shi Chun, where he has shared his opinions and experiences as well as recommendations on obesity. And we have covered pretty a lot when it comes to this particular topic today but we'll go further to end this interviews so doctor uh, would you um, help us to understand how we can measure this obesity or even the consumption of our food intake uh, let me go into the ways to measure uh, obesity sure. more specific yeah one of the ways that is widely used is actually the body mass index so you actually measure your height against your weight against your height. Mm -hmm. There's a formula to calculate that. I won't, sh I won't talk in about it today. Mm -hmm. It's just that uh, we, we should keep our BMI below 25. 25. 25. Mm -hmm. So 24.99 to be <laughs> exact, okay? So if you're 25 and above, you're considered as uh, overweight. Mm -hmm. And you're above 30, you're actually obese. Uh, that said and done, I would like to uh, share that Body mass index may not be the best way, best measurement for people who are actually lean and muscular. Mm. So they have actually very high BMI, but actually, but they're not fat. Right. So uh, another way to measure is actually by the body fat percentage in the body mm. that is used uh, a machine, you know, in the gym and things like that. They actually measure that. So uh, 
that is more accurate in the sense that we actually just measure the fat percentage mm -hmm. as rather to your weight as a whole. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fat percentage in uh, women mm -hmm. should be around 25 to 31%. Right. 25 okay. to 31 So if you are above that, then you are actually obese already. Mm -hmm. But I would... Uh, advice or maybe recommend or maybe encourage you to keep your fat percentage below 21. 21. That, that is called fitness. Right. Okay, 21 to 24 is, is actually fitness for women. Mm. So that should be your goal and your target. As for the men, as you know, a man has got less fat. Yeah. So the barometer is higher. <laughs> so uh, the average male actually has uh, about 18 to 24 percent mm -hmm. so as compared to women 25 to 31 mm -hmm. so but men who are in fitness range is actually 14 to 7 17 percent that's pretty low <laughs> that's low yes i know and it's not easy you know I, I work out in my gym and then you know i was like 21 22 and that's considered average for a male mm -hmm. and i've been trying to dip below 20 for the past one and a half years and uh Manage, just manage to do that. And it's not easy because it's not like your weight. If you lose one kilo, it's pretty easy. <laughs> but to lose 1% of fat, it takes a lot of work. Mm. But you have to really measure it, test it, and really uh, set a dream, right. set a goal for that. Mm -hmm. People do also use like uh, measure the skin thickness mm -hmm. for fat, you know. So obviously, again, the male and female is a bit different. I think that's not such a popular way to measure it. Right. I think based on this, uh, the BMI and maybe the fat percentage in the body would have been quite adequate. You can also actually measure your waist. It's very easy to measure your waist. For an average man of 5 feet 8, for example, most Asians are around there. They are not too tall, 5 mm -hmm. feet 8. So the ideal uh, waist yes. is below 35. 35 cm. The mm. ideal is 31. 31. I hardly see anyone with 31 waist nowadays. That's pretty slim. I, right? If you go to the shopping center, 31 or 32 is like, no, people go 34, 35, 36, <laughs> 38 and all. But at least you try to be about below 35 for 5 foot 8, okay? All right. So that's, for women, uh, I think our Malaysian women are probably around range like 5 feet 3, 5 feet 4. Okay. That's pretty high already. Uh, pretty tall, I mean. Yeah. So they should actually the ideal weight, ideal waist circumference is twenty six inches. Twenty six inch. Okay. Uh, that's almost like a model's uh, waist. Yeah, really. exactly. Yeah, but if you can just keep it below thirty point seven, to be accurate, <laughs> uh, that would be quite good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anything above thirty three to thirty four is obese already. Mm. And mind you, a lot of women are even not as tall as five feet four. They are going below. So they should be below. So, <laughs> yeah. they, they, you know, the, the standard is there. So, what I feel that uh, sometimes you are, you must know where's your point A and what's point B, okay? Sometimes the point B may be too high for you. Mm. So, you have to set your barometers a bit low. If you are like 36 inches, mm -hmm. you want to go to 32, I think it's, it's very disheartening if you after six months, <laughs> you don't reach that. But what about just two inches? Right. Two inches... Is it makes you look better, mm -hmm. it makes you feel better, and it also makes you believe that you can do it. Right. I mean, losing two inches of your waistline is it's not easy, but it's, I mean, it's, it's also achievable for a lot of people. It's not only the waist, uh, the, the measurement, right? I mean, if you lose two inches from a waist, that means you're losing the whole body. Yes, obviously, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, when you lose two inches of a waist, you actually lose maybe half an inch of your arms and maybe another inch of each of your thighs, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit less of your double chin <laughs> and, and things like that. For sure. But then it's achievable. What I want the listeners to know is that if you were to aim to lose two inches of your waist, it would uh, really make you feel much better. It mm -hmm. makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel confident. And that would give you the confidence or maybe the motivation to right. even look out for a lot of other health issues or fitness issues for that for the matter. Mm -hmm. So from there on, we can also talk about 
the treatment that the BTL clinic has been providing. And I'm sure not many people are pretty familiar with this term or even the name called Vanquish Me. And Dr. Kush, you elaborate on this treatment. Okay, Vanquish Me is a technology that I've come to love a lot because I've gone through a lot of uh, technologies because I, in the aesthetic field, I right. actually have access to a lot of technologies. For example, people do lose fat by using cryolipolysis. You know, they actually freeze the fat and like, Cut it of, off. <laughs> uh, let the fat die. You know, right. people actually use ultrasound mm. technology. A- and the latest is the RF technology. More specifically is the RF, the focus RF, the broadband selective RF, Mm. which is the technology behind Vanquish Me, the BTL Vanquish Me technology. I love these technologies because uh, it's painless. Mm. There are a lot of technology out there you can do, but then it comes with a lot of discomfort and pain. And uh, I find that my clients, they are unable to actually complete the whole treatment, Mm -hmm. uh, treatment procedures. For example, you know, so if it's too painful, then people do not really want to do it. Mm-hmm. So PTL Vanquish Me actually, uh, it treats a large area and treat your abdomen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even now we have a extra handpiece or the applicator that's used for the thighs. Right. You know, a lot of women and men, they actually want to do thighs as well because mm-hmm. thigh is and hip area is actually a huge problem. So this technology uh, eliminates the fat non-invasively. Mm-hmm. There's no downtime, so that's good. Mm-hmm. And uh, no discomfort. You basically lie down, have a little bit of warm over your right. abs, and then uh, bring lots of water. Mm-hmm. And that's it. You do about weekly treatment for four times. Mm-hmm. Each treatment actually takes about 45 minutes. Right. Uh, besides that, you need a bit of time for the measurement and things like that. So it's it's rather acceptable treatment Mm. with a reasonable good result. How popular is this treatment in Malaysia? Uh, How has people been accepting and receiving this treatment so far? Any feedbacks and responses? Yes, uh, it's really popular. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like I've told you earlier, because uh, it's Mm non-painful. It's not painful and it's comfortable and there's a result. Actually, uh, in our clients, they actually, when they treat it, they actually talk to other people. I have one client actually have lost 15 centimeter. Right. That's and a lot. that's <laughs> a lot. I mean, 15 centimeter is amazing. Without surgery, we used to do this with like surgical procedures. But now, uh, with this Vanquish Me, this lady I know uh, is uh, about 50, late 50s, 60s. You know, she's actually a grandma to seven grandchildren. <laughs> she lost 15 centimeters. And not only that, she got so motivated, she actually went on and uh, lose weight as well and become very much healthier. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do meet her from time to time and uh, you know, she's so bubbly, <laughs> full of excitement and energy. Right. So that's something that um, you can recommend people to motivate yourself further. I mean, after you see the result, for sure, you want to do more because you want to look better and you want to have a healthy lifestyle. Yes, I I would say this is like a kickstart, you know. If you want to start something, you do it and then... But basically, you have to maintain it with your lifestyle and your diet. For sure, mm. yeah. So this BTL uh, Vanquish Me treatment is uh, something that you uh, you would love to recommend to people. And you mentioned about four sessions of 45 minutes each. But what are the other uh, recommendations uh, coming from you, Dr. Chin, professional recommendation that you can give out to our listeners out there? I think uh, I have basically two, two advice for the listeners out there. And first thing is, you must seek professional advice. Okay. Okay. If you want to lose weight, you got into the problem by yourself. If you have known enough, you will probably get out of your problem by yourself. Right. But that's not the case. Mm-hmm. We reach this because of the way we do, or the way we think, or the influence around us. So to get out of it, you really need professional help. Mm. Seek out some medical professionals to help you. Mm. Uh, you know, let them go through it. What are the disease that you have or what are the problems, what is what the psychology behind this and all. Have a good assessment and then go for some treatment. Not everybody needs to go for some machine treatment. Not everybody needs to go for some liposuction and things like that. Not everybody needs to go on drugs and things like that. But at least you can discuss it out with your professional mm-hmm. medical or a doctor, for example. 
and talk it out and then come at the uh, to the conclusion of what needs to be done or what can be done to start it with. At the same time, you have to be realistic. Set a small goal, set a small dream. But uh, the, my second advice is start today. Right. You know, don't wait. Uh, there are so many things that we can do. Perhaps don't take the leave. If you just one staircase up or two, and if it's safe, of course, okay, <laughs> why don't you just take the staircase? staircase I do right. it all the time, mm -hmm. okay? Perhaps park a little bit further mm -hmm. and, you know, walk, try to take public transport, start to exercise. You need to do three to four times of active exercise a week at least to for it to happen. Mm -hmm. You can't just like exercise once a month or once a week. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Okay. You, you, you can't just say, oh, I do a bit of jogging on Sundays. That's it. It. <laughs> that's it. It doesn't because the way our body works is by metabolism. Mm -hmm. You have to increase the metabolism to break down the fat, right. you know, to, to, break, to burn out your sugar and things mm -hmm. like that. You have to do it at least three to four times. Then you seek another professional help. It's seek for like maybe a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. I know personal trainer is really expensive, but to begin with, you do not want to injure yourself in the gym. Mm -hmm. You want to do the right exercise, the right amount of exercise, the right mm -hmm. intensity. You know, and besides some other uh, professional help or advice on your diet, you know, how do you do your diet? There's so many diets out there. You can't just go online and download something and say, this is good for me, I'm going to do it. But they, it comes with some problems sometimes, you know. It could be too drastic for you. It could damage your kidneys or things like that. So like I say, you seek professional advice, how to start. You seek professional advice on how to exercise. Mm. You seek a professional advice on how to eat proper meal, something that's acceptable to you over the long term. Don't have a diet for one month and go back to your same lifestyle again. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work that way. Mm -hmm. So I think that that message should grow across. I hope you start today, you start to believe that you can do something uh, that you have great dreams, you know, to live a long and healthy life mm -hmm. and to spend time with your young ones, with your children, right. you know, go traveling and just live life a little bit more great mm -hmm. than what you are now. Yeah, that's really great. So before we end our interviews with Dr. Chin, uh, could you uh, let us know where we can find you? <laughs> uh, Grace, yeah, people can find me. I practice in MJ Skin and Laser Clinic in Shah Alam. Our website is uh, mj-aesthetic.com. So you can actually Google me, my name or my clinic. It's easily found. You can Facebook or Instagram me, mm. mj.aesthetic. It's mj.aesthetic. So if you Google my name or uh, MJ Aesthetic or MJ Clinic, I think you, you can find me easily. Mm. Do contact me, email me or send me an inquiry. I would love to hear from you. I may not know everything, but then at least I can refer you to the right person. Mm -hmm. And I would like to, you know, make a difference in your life. Something that uh, we can journey together. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Chin. <laughs>